Hi, this is AKA Engineering and today we are making some rubies. It can be found underground and used as a gemstone or we can manufacture it. Auguste Van Uyl developed a method to make synthetic corundum by melting aluminum oxide and when mixed with chrome it becomes ruby. Mixed with titanium oxide we get sapphire. This time we will concentrate on ruby but in the past I also tried sapphire. We measure 19.6 grams of aluminum oxide with 0.4 grams of chrome oxide. Both oxides should be a fine powder and mixed well together. Mixing by hand is possible, but a ball mill will give a better result. We carefully place some ball bearings in the oxide mixture. Then we close the container and tape it to a cordless drill. While the oxides are mixing, we are preparing some high temperature electrodes for our furnace. We need a material that can survive high temperatures. For my first run I tried using graphite electrodes that I collected from pencils. That took quite a while. I stacked some fire bricks to protect my workbench to make a makeshift furnace. Next we create a small mold to keep the loose powder from flying away. Here you can see the graphite electrode in the middle of our mold. Now we take our oxide mix and place it inside the mold. You should always wear gloves when working with this mixture, because the chrome oxide will make you crazy. And having abrasives in your lung isn't healthy either. I use some tungsten wire to connect the graphite electrode and the copper cable to protect the copper from the heat. These flash lamps are used in a laser and the electrodes are made out of pure tungsten. I simply break off the glass and have two high temperature electrodes. I connected the copper wire to the tungsten rod and taped it to a stick and then we are ready to start. We turn the voltage up to 1200 volts and then we bring the electrodes close together to form an arc. This will melt the mixture. We wait until it's cool, then we remove the ruby with a pair of tweezers and clean it with water and a brush. Our first synthetic ruby is done. For the second test I replaced the graphite electrode with some tungsten wire and used less powder. Above 1000 degrees Celsius, the chrome gets dissolved in the aluminum oxide. After it has stopped glowing, we can collect it and cool it and clean it with water. I enjoy doing this process, so I made a couple of cycles using this setup. By the way, this is pretty close to the process the industry is using to make synthetic rubies and even the inventor used an arc furnace back in the day. After making a bunch of rubies, I cleaned them up using a wire brush. This way we get rid of all the powder that didn't get hot enough to melt into ruby. Because the tungsten wire kept melting away, I replaced it with another tungsten rod. And there we have the third version of our do-it-yourself arc furnace. We fill in the oxide powder and use a piece of tungsten wire to help with the connection because the oxides are not conductive. My camera can't really capture the arcs because they are too bright. In order to fix that I placed a filter in front of my camera. But as you can see it didn't really help a lot. I even tried two filters on top of each other. But now you can see just the arc. And my protective glasses look like this. So... We 
we remove the filter, we wait till it's cooled down, then we collect and clean again. This piece of ruby got sharpened to a point and to show you how hard it is, I will scratch some steel. As you can see, the ruby scratches the mild steel with ease, because it's way harder. This rod is made out of hardened steel and a regular file doesn't even scratch the surface. But our ruby is even harder than that. Only diamonds are more durable than this. The video will end with close-ups of the best results using this method. That's all for today and if you want to see more about material science, please subscribe to my channel and have a nice day.